To be home, man. So happy to be home and enjoy all that Linden and Guyana has to offer. Look at this river. Look at this river. So I got a weakness for rivers. Yeah. See that? So we are gonna hit the road. But yeah, this is our first morning. We got home after 12 last night. So we now gonna we had 
three hours sleep so we back on our feet and ready to rock and roll yes. so stay tuned guys you're gonna see us and this is silver tonga yeah yes this this silver area Linden. this is on the wisma shore this yeah this is the wisma this is silver tongue welcome yeah to welcome silver to silver tongue but this is the main road this front road here is burnham drive runs all the way from that bridge straight down to christianburg the Wisma Mackenzie Bridge. So, use that bridge to get over to Mackenzie. Yeah, that's the bridge there that takes you across the river to Mackenzie and to Georgetown. So stay tuned, guys. You'll be seeing a lot of us on this home trip. See this guy here? This is Linden number one boat captain. <laughs> yes. Every day, people call to always come to bring me up like that, man. <laughs> this is a big Ricky boy. That you again. How is everything? Welcome back. Yeah. Ricky. Yeah, mistress. <laughs> everything Welcome good? Welcome back. Yeah, yeah. Going yeah. And huh? check Going a, and check a, a, a spin across the river with the big Ricky. Yes. Okay. Let me go along. Going down the bridge here. Right. Into the boat. Town to be, you know, you don't know. At least, as, as, as they are from here, you know, with the day, you know. But it's good to be, I would say, you know. Nice. As everybody catch this boat, hey. Oh, yeah. I want. I want put nobody on camera that don't want to be. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. All right. I just want this man. I can't go on camera. Yes. <laughs> so we ain't trying to do that, right? You better, you better be careful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at another one coming over there. So we get to be first boat right since we came home. Next one, you got to be You think you could do it? You think that? You could do it? You think you could yeah, boat coming down the river, probably from Old England or somewhere. There's Banks DIH outlet there. All here is where I used to get a lot of fish, man, to cast net, tie out seine. All here, so all here, catch a lot of fish. Catching some early morning water coconut here. This is the good thing. Is it? Is it refreshing, right? Look at all these nice coconuts here. Oh my gosh. This is the thing. Saturday morning on the road. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to stain my clothes up. So. Saturday morning on Mackenzie Market Square. So, came out here to see where we could pick up some fruit, some coconut water. Start the day off right. Can't be fresher than that out of straight out of the shell, eh, guys? You got Jelby? I'm gonna see your spoon. You cleaning doing? your spoon? Yeah, he's gonna clean it up. So. Good. Nice jelly. Nice jelly. What? Nice jelly. Mm. Good job. Is it? Nice and juicy and good, right? 
Here's the arrow. This is the arrow. I'm sorry. Oh, that looks good, yes. Nice and good. I'm waiting on a straw to get mine. So, Jackie's trying our coconut there. Perfect rehydration drink, eh? It's good. So good. Yes, refreshing. Yeah, Somebody got a towel, so I'm going to look. And just run into the rasta man. Yes, big up, big up every time. This is Steve, <laughs> my brother in law. Hey, you have not James? Eh? Yes, this is the big Steve. Old time yellow boards basketball player. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Yeah, man. So everything good, partner? Everything good, everything good. Shout out, to, shout out to Sean and Bort and everybody, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at this jelly here. Yep. Mm. That's the right thing, right? Real thing. Nice, honey. Sweet. Yeah. Where you can't pull up your belly now, it's just coconut water. Well, you gotta I gotta run around the block. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta get a feeling what the man Oreo and guinea. Can't see what we could get, but no, this is good. Yeah, what you could get. Mm -hmm. This is yeah. good, guys. Why you give me this? Yep. Look at this, guys. Catching a nice egg ball here yeah. from Uncle wow. Dio. Mm. Sour. This is my good buddy Dio. Mm. Dio Lake Rum. No, 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 no yes, yes. Season greetings to all. Yes, yeah, yes. And we got Mr. David Alcock, better known as 12. We sit down here having a nice egg ball by the mm -hmm. And we're we going to get some barbecue. Barbecue. Going Christmas Eve up. day. So we're going to, we come in and, and crash this barbecue yes, by. No problem. Yes, yes. I see the rain setting up there in the background. What? We are gonna do? We gotta brave the weather. Mm -hmm. Bless him. <laughs> chicken foot, guys. Chicken foot, chicken foot. Yeah. You're good. Mm -hmm. oh. Here come the rain. Holy smoke. Yeah, man. I miss, I miss the song that I ran on the roof. Listen to that. I don't hear this. That's a nice, that's a nice. Listen to the rhythm of the falling rain. I'm drinking a sour sap. And then guys getting some cold banks. Welcome to another edition of Voice of the Diaspora. In studio with me today are two overseas based Lindeners, Brian and Jacqueline Alicock Murray. They will be taking us on a ride to showcase the beauty of Wismore Linden. The Murrays are well-known Lindeners. They are people who have been known and respected in the Linden community. The Murrays are fishermen and also goldsmiths. Brian, a great friend of mine, an older friend of mine, and his wife, Jacqueline, Alicock Murray, who, whom have known each other from school days, uh, joins me now. Welcome to Voice of the Diaspora, Brian and Jacqueline Alicock Murray. You're live on air.
Can you hear me there, Brian? You're live on air. Jacqueline, you're live on air. I think I think we're getting some some static there. Brian and Jacqueline, can you hear me? You're live on air. Greetings, greetings. You're live on air. Can you hear me? I think we're getting some problems there. Um, seems like they're not hearing me. They're live on air. Uh, can you hear me, Brian? All right, let me just go to... I think we're getting some um, we're getting some static there. Brian and Jacqueline, can you hear me? They're not hearing me. Um, I don't know what is happening. Uh, so we will have to sort that out. Uh, I don't know really. I really don't know what is happening. Um, <laughs> Learning how to ride a bike and learning how to cuss. Drinking coconut water in the country that your belly daily bus. And the first time you wear long pants and feel like a man. Remember when Ramadan and Valentine beat England? Hiding in the backyard smoking a cigarette. And when they give you castor oil, you're living in the toilet. Brian and Jacqueline Murray here with me. Brian, can you hear me? Jackie, can you hear me? Are you not hearing me? I think you need to use some headphones. But you're live on here. Can you hear me? I think we're getting some problem at their end. Um, out to the right. Out to the left. Brian and Jackie, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Oh, uh, we're getting some. Uh, you're hearing me now. I think you guys need to use some headphones because you're live on here and. Um, it seems as though you can't hear me. So I don't know what is happening. If you can actually... If you can't hear me, if you can hang up and call back in, that would be great. We will be going to showtime. Brian and Jacqueline here on the program. We're getting some hiccups at the moment. Uh, viewers, be patient. Um, let us see if we can sort this out. Oh, there's a raft going down the river. Remember your boyhood days. Remember your wayward ways. Come, let me go down memory lane. Check out them days again. Remember learning how to ride a bike and learning how to cuss. Drinking coconut water in the country that your belly daily bus and the first time you wear long pants and feel like a man remember when Ramadan and Valentine beat England hiding in the backyard smoking a cigarette and when they give you castor oil you're living in the toilet I remember still and I always will Time cannot be raised Boyhood days Remember black put by the corner Every Saturday Garlic poke at Christmas Ice cream on Sunday 
Remember peeping at two lovers in the grass Remember trying hard not to sleep during midnight mass And the first time you get a chica in your big toe And the first time you ask a girl and she tell you no Welcome. We can hear you now. Welcome to another edition of Voice of the Diaspora. Brian and Jacqueline Murray, two overseas-based Lindeners, here with us to talk about the beauty of Wisma in particular. Um, the Murrays are well-known Lindeners. Uh, the Murrays are fishermen and um, goldsmiths and popular people. And so this evening, we will be talking about the beauty of Linden, what they want to say to Guyanese around the world, Lindeners especially. Why should they return home to enjoy a holiday in Linden? What is it about Linden, the wildlife, uh, the community, Silverton, Canva City, those beautiful places that bring back memories of yesteryear. Welcome to the program, Brian and Jacqueline. Thank you very much, Thank Norman. You. Thank you. Look, I'm elated by the fact that I have this opportunity uh, to have a conversation with, with you, uh, you, Brian, and Jacqueline. Of course, I know that you have been together from since school days. I cannot count the decades. But I know that the Maurice, uh, are have had an impression on my childhood, and I want the world to know that. I was welcomed in your home. I was introduced to good books. I remember the days of, uh, of reading Louis L'Amour. Um, the Maurice would have introduced me to the Sackett brand. I can recall Mr. Maurice, a fisherman, sitting at the window looking out um, on Barnum Drive with his dark, with his dark rim glasses, uh, a very avid reader who, who would have raised uh, beautiful daughters and sons. And the thing about the Murray, Murray is they are very family orientated and um, oriented and they, they, they are a very close family. Billy, of course, William Murray Jr. Billy was my best friend um, and, and Brian and Trini and the rest of the family we had downstairs. We had Chinese that with, was with one of your sisters um and so on but that yard uh paul and of course the others would have been visiting and so on it was a very beautiful experience for me as a young boy growing up and i felt so welcome and, and a sense of belonging being there with that family and i want history to record that as i bring you on this program but of course this program is your program you will be doing most of the talking and so on but um I have to make that point to the viewers around the world that this family is a family that has welcomed me and welcomed many, many in Linden. And they have given a service to the community and they have been a people that belong to the land. Of course, the Ali Cox also are well-known people uh, at Linden. And Jackie is here with us, the wife of Brian Murray. Welcome to the program, guys. You are in Guyana. Tell us what is happening. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for having us on your program, Norman. And like you said, we come a long, long way. Long way. We, we read so much books together. We even play cricket together. Yes. But since we migrated, like about 15 years ago, this is our first Christmas back home. Yes. yes. There is no place I have spent a Christmas like back home in Silvertown. Silvertown, especially, not just Silvertown, the entire Wisma is a really, really special place to me. There's no place like this. You could just step across the road and you could you reach the river, you, you could fish in there. I fish so much in that river, I can't count the amount of fish I caught. <laughs> me and my brothers and my dad, we fish so much there. Yes. So I would tell my wife after we marry, I tell her, look, Please put on some rice. I'm going to the river and get some yes. curry. <laughs> you know, and yes. I, you believe it. 
I'm coming back with something. Yes. So we had to come back for Christmas, man. And you know, I started this YouTube channel, me and Jackie started it a couple of months ago. Yes. And we started it as just a something that we could do together. Yes, yes. Something that we you know we, we spend the time doing together and having fun. That's the main aim of this. And after a while people saw what we're doing and they gave us the encouragement and said, Why don't you, you know, do something more? Showcase Guyana, showcase Linden. And I have grown up, my dad used to take me in Rockstone. Rockstone is is, is in the Amazon basin. So we yeah. have what what's in here is in the entire Amazon basin. So it's rich with wildlife. So I want to showcase that, showcase the beauty of Linden. Yes. So, you know, so that's something that we agreed to, to do and have fun doing it. And, and since... Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead, go ahead. Since, since I came home, the amount of people that came up to me and said, good job, you know, I feel really good to know that they, they like the little what I'm doing and they feel proud that somebody from here is showcasing that. Yes. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful that in your own way, you're contributing to Wisma Linden. And, and um, of course, you will say to our viewers what is the name of your channel and um, how they can access it and so on. Jackie, you are with Brian. Um, you're a couple, uh, you know. Your partners, your you know, inseparable. I would want to say for 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 decades, for decades, and we will talk about that later, uh, for young yeah. people to understand that influence. But we're talking about Linden now, Jackie. When what what touches you about Linden when you return? When you compare the days you live there and the now, what is it that touches you? What touches me is the warmth of the people. I love my Guyanese people, Lindeners to boot. Everyone is so friendly, so welcoming. And I am happy to see Linden is developing. Because way back in the days, you know, everything was a little more, not as, what should I say? Not as modernized as now. Yes. Now we have like beautiful grocery stores you can go into and find anything that you can find in the other parts of the world. You can find that here. Right at you can the Yes, James Fraser and Sons. You walk into his grocery store and you get anything you want. But you remember we you remember Jimmy's small shop by the roadside more up the road you remember that little shop and you know you would go buy your drinks and so on there and so on i think he has expanded and he is a very um affluent businessman and i i i saw something recently where this they were comparing the prices of jimmy's and the chinese and people were saying support your own because jimmy is giving a service that is professional that the prices can compete with the Chinese. And so I wanted to, I, I, I'm glad you mentioned that. So go ahead. Yeah. And there is good food. Let me tell you, I am experiencing some really good food. We have, um, there's a cafe down on Wisma Shore here. I haven't checked it out yet, but I plan to. I heard the cuisine is good. Yes. And on Kenzie Shore in Greenheart Street. Billy's Grill. Good quality food. And you know, I like to cook. Yes. And I get good cuisine. So, so Lennon is developing. It yes. Is, it is developing. So it is developing. There's a lot more. There's a lot more to be done, but it is. You can still feel that sort of um change. Yes. Brian, you are. You have been a fisherman for a long time. I think you are a man who is connected to the land. Um, 
What is it about Linden that you like most? Is it I, I know when we our viewers watch that lengthy footage that I would have played to introduce you guys. We saw you getting into the boat, um, you know, uh, with people that we know. I call him Buck, uh, you know. I don't remember his real name, but I've known him from since a youngster driving boat. I remember the Lakrams. Uh, we would have seen that they're doing their businesses still. Um, Tulsi and his brother, who was shown here on the program on in your footage. Um, but you have an affinity um, to the waters, to the wildlife, to the natural vegetation. Talk to us a bit about that. Yeah, well, my father was one of Linden's most prominent fishermen. And I grew up, he taking me everywhere he went to fish. Out of all the, my there's four brothers in all, right? Out of the four boys, I was the one that picked up the fishing more than the rest. So I used to go everywhere with my dad. So I learned all the little tricks, all the little skills, all the little know-hows, and I stick with that. And after he got up in age, I would go by myself when, with my crew now. I would take my sons, and teach them and and so it so happened that they love fishing also i was so glad for that i'm so proud of, you know that they could follow in in that tradition i would say mm -hmm. because we just don't fish in linden we fish in guyana we fish in escribo we fish in barbie we, we go all over fishing and hunting but it's something i guess it's in the blood i just love it love fishing and hunting what, what, do you think that is because you were born by the river? Um, your home is directly opposite the Demara River. Uh, uh, you know, it, it, does that have anything to do with it, that affinity to, to the waters and to fishing and so on? I, I think that definitely has something to do with it because it's so easily accessible. It's right there. And you could just go there and have fun. You get something to eat sometimes. You know, you don't always keep what you catch. But there is some that you said, oh, I like this type. I'll keep this. And other people see you catch fish and catching. Next thing you know, there's 10, 15 people fishing with you. Because they see what's going on. They want a part of the fun. They want a part of the action. So a lot of people started fishing when they see us at the river doing our thing man okay. and that definitely has something to do with it jackie you were born by the river too right behind aluminum plant uh, aluminum yes. plant that and you were born right by the river too uh, probably mm. closer than brian has to walk across the road but you could just just walk down and go down into the waters the yeah. alicocks are you know yeah. um and and so the water i think has brought has brought the family together what, what what is your affinity to 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 um to that the water is very relaxing to me even overseas when i'm stressed i tell brian i said let's go find a lake let's go find something that is just so peaceful so calming because we grew up on the water yes it's so calm wonderful Brian, you you have um you are very popular and you know a lot of people. In some of the footages that we will show today, they're brief footages, so it's not going to be as long as the first one. Uh, but in some of the footages, you have traveled through Silver Tongue, and many people would have commented in the advert that you know it, it has brought back memories, like you know when they see the Lyles House. Um, you have a, a a memory of people. You drove through Canvas City. And you could point to places and names of people, reggae, Harry Mahes, um, Norman, this is where Norman Brown lived. This is where this person lived. The people that I didn't even remember. You have a fantastic memory of people at Wisma. Um, when you took that ride through Silvertongue, you know, the different street, because you know Silvertongue is a kind of complex 
design yeah. where you have Middle Street, you know, and then you turn into Fourth Street, Second Street, Third Street, where the Zephyrs are. The memories of of Silver Tongue, um, for me, it is it is it is something that 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 warms my soul because, as you know, we would sit outside Rickford Morris's shop selling nuts. Brenda Blair, Anthony, and them lived next door, and we would see everybody that coming from work that live in Silver Tongue that would go through Middle Street and then branch off to the different areas and so on. Um, when you look back at those days and the now, and as you drive through those areas, as you stop to talk to people, give the viewers that nostalgic understanding of how you felt and, you know, what it was like. Yes, I, I, that was, that was something so awesome because normally these people are, wasn't just people I knew. These were more than friends, more than neighbors. These were something like family, like family, because you know, we grew up with the Smalls, we grew up with the Zephyrs, we grew up with, with the, uh, with kids, with the Parks, the Beckles. Those ben people Beckles. are not just friends. Those people, we grew up with those people. The Porters. Porters, the Hopes. Yes. The Britons, you know, the Bromills, the Lords, yes, those people, yes. Yes, the Coins, those people are the Norris, everybody, those were so close knit. And they were family, man. This whole estate town was like a big family. And I'm mesmerized yeah. by that, and I'm glad that you have returned uh, for your first Christmas to showcase that because it's important to people in the diaspora. Um, from Linden, uh, in particular, Wisma, you know, to, to, to hear you and to see uh, and to be inspired to return that we can showcase the community where we are from. I want to go to this. Um, I'm not getting my clips clearly, so I hope I don't mix them up. I want to go to this clip and then we can talk about it. Oh, there's a raft going down the river. Early morning, Saturday morning, they're taking the timber down, the wood. Transportation of logs through the river. Yeah, all the logs they're taking down, transporting it to... But how far they take it? Yeah, Georgetown. Georgetown. Okay. So they're going down to either Sue's Dyke or Georgetown. Taking the logs down. That looks so peaceful, just floating on the water going down, eh? The, the tide is going down, so it's easier for them to go with the tide. This used to, this is the mode of transportation since water, through, water. through the water since before I was born. Eh? We were used to seeing this going down the the river, the rafts floating down, going with the logs, going down to the timber grants. That was the mode of transportation before the highway started existing. Yeah. Look at that. The vehicles on the road and the timber on the water. <laughs> See? Two-way transportation. So they would actually cut the timbers in the jungle and the tractors would bring it to the river. And then they would tie them up on these um, balagoos. Uh -huh. All the balagoos, you can't really see the balagoos, but the balagoos is what's holding it up, holding up the timber. Like floats. Yeah, that hold it up. So then they would either they're using an engine, but some back in the day I used to see a lot that they're just using a tide. Tide to go. They would just yeah. steer it and they use a the tide to drift it down the river. They had some big oars, yeah, they would pad they would steer it with some big fat paddles. Aye. This is scared them fast, so this is a fast so put them really do it right. Okay, with the engine? Yeah. Mm -hmm. With the engine. 
of a whole day. Yeah, that's smart. Work smarter, not harder, right? Mm -hmm. So awesome to see. And the Popo going. And this is the Welcome to Silver Tongue sign. So Silver Tongue welcomes you. I love this. We be going in Silver Tongue for a minute. Yes. Well, we're going to take a drive into Silver Tongue. Well, this is our house in Silver Tongue. This, but this is on the main road, Barnum Drive. This is where I live for most of my life. All through the small years. Yes, this is home. This is home. Got a mango tree in the background. Two coconut trees, fully laden. We used to have a lot of trees back in the day. Guinea, cashew, dung, five fingers, celery, golden apple. We got cherries on the side yeah. there and sour sap in front. Yeah. So this is it guys. Home sweet home. Yes. Ma okay, we're headed into Silvertown. This is Middle Street. Middle Street Silvertown. This is Middle Street and um, on the left and on the right there's cross street. That's fourth street. Okay, this so, is first. If you go in, in the left hand section, that's no. my auntie's house. They're doing some cleaning up. I'm trying to get stuff situated, I guess. Yes. And this is and this the. Is, um, on the right hand side, this is all of my neighbors. The Kato right here. Mm -hmm. The Zephyrs used to live right there. Dudley, my friend Dudley. Used to live the next house over, and then you go further down, you reach the Antony's, you go straight down, you reach the Alsops, you know, the Brummels, all the people, man. Okay. Yeah, and that big house over there on the left hand side, that's the Lyle's house. My good friend Hilton Lyle, but he. he good morning. He died. A little while ago, but the son lives there. God rest his soul, him and his wife. Such a tragedy, and we extended our condolences. And then his brother is here right now, uh, my good friend Clint. So, going down a little bit more. Oh, the parks live right here. The parks was our good, good family friends who are all in here. So all the brothers, the sisters. And then the next building is uh, the Beckles. This building here. Yeah, the Beckles was our friends for forever. So all of them. We... Lennox was so our good friend. Lennox we used to be by us all the time. So and then this is Second Street. Okay. This is Second Street, Silvertown, right here. You go through here, you reach the Barclays, you reach the Macklin Tox, the Max, Wayne Sampson. Wayne McKenzie, the Porters, the Biases. Okay. Yes. So, and um, right here, this very first house used to be the Mohammeds. Oh. The Mohammeds, Colleen, Steve, Lester, Maggie, Leslin. Oh. Yeah, they used to be our very good friends, man. This is Silver Tongue, guys. At the corner of Third Street here used to be the Henry's. Okay. Nigel Henry show in Henry. Our good friends. Mm. Oh. And this is Third Street. So I got my good friend here, Wattle. This used to be my barber for all the years. Hey, you caught in here this morning? <laughs> no, I'm not gonna do this. So lovely, so so lovely, reminiscent of the great old days. Jackie, how did you feel when you uh, would have been driving through Silver Tongue and seeing it's those? Um, such a good feeling home to see people and to hear the history of who lived in Silver Tongue. 
because I'm not originally from Silverton. So to hear Brian talk of all his neighbors, though some of them, but not all. And it gives such a good, warm feeling, eh? To remember and to revisit and to see some familiar faces. Yes. yes. Good feeling. It is a good feeling because it brings back memories to me too. Because all those people that uh, that that you would have um, uh, highlighted there, the Zephyrs, um, the Catos, the Becks, the Alsops, the Henrys. During my childhood days, we would have gone into every one of those yards. We would have sat out there and all of that. And Brian, you know that it, those are popular yes. people. Um, the Becks had a shop right up to the front. People would sit down out there. Mr. Kato had all those fancy lights on his house that everybody would. So there was like, you know, I mean, the porters, um, of course, very popular too. Um, and, and, and so it is so touching. And I'm sure that the viewers watching who are from Wisma can actually relate to these moments and so on. And so you are doing a wonderful job as you are there, uh, while you are there. Um, what do you want to say about about Silvertown, Brian? And and based on the footage uh, we would have just looked at. Well, right now I have seen some development that is going on, and I was speaking to one of the the parks. He was highlighting to me some of the developments that they have in store. Mm -hmm. So I told him I'll come back and meet with him and find out exactly what is the plan they have, you know, and what is needed and what we could probably generate to see how it could assist with this development. You know, mm. I think it's a really good thing that these guys are doing and we need to assist and help this place develop some more because look, people, I think Guyanese gonna be coming back home a lot to pay visits here. And if you could come home and see that you're so comfortable having your vacation, you know, you you enjoy yourself so much, you're gonna you're gonna wanna come more than once a year now, man. I'm telling you. you and really I I, I do agree. Um in terms of development, I would say that like looking at your house, I couldn't recognize it. It's a place I used to go to. But of course, families, you know, who can afford it, you know, you're overseas, you would improve on your structure, you would improve on your building and so on. But as I look at the clips, I still see that old look. I still see that ancient look of our time. Like, there is no, to me, from my observation based on the clip, there is no real infrastructure develop, inf infrastructural development. You you know you you can't see on the roadways and you know it, it, it's hard to say, but it is the same old look. You can see improvements in terms of some streets. You can see you know certain structures being put up by people who would have sacrificed to rebuild but linden itself as i look at the beauty of what we knew it as to talk about development in a in the modern way like you in the us or i'm in london to see that transformation of a modern community a modern tongue i don't see that and i have to be frank but of course, the, it juxtaposes the fact that we like the raw look of the community. We like the way the river looks. We like, you know what I mean, seeing what we have known from way back. But there hasn't been that sort of transformation, in my opinion, in my estimation, that I could say, wow, Linden looks like Port of Spain in Trinidad. Linden looks like you know, a, 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 an area in Florida and so on. There hasn't been that. But I'm not taking away from the fact that the nostalgic feeling would make us feel warm about the original look of the place. Um, 
that we would have known from childhood. And that is beautiful. But in terms of that sort of development, in, the ter in terms of transformation, that we could say Lyndon is thriving, we could say whatever, I haven't um, seen that in those footages. What are your thoughts? Well, I wouldn't say it's thriving as yet. Because we know that the bauxite plant that we develop, uh, depended on so much, it's not as big as before. Mm -hmm. So there is still that need for economic development, for an yes. income, yes. for yes. people to, to get an a, a, a income other than bauxite plant, other than the timber, because it's not everybody cuts timber. You know, just the reverend people. And not everybody goes into the gold bush. So there is need for more income. And when that, we could find something that to generate income in the town of Linden. Mm -hmm. You know, we think it's going to be a lot more development. But until such time, we're going to just got to hope and pray that, you know, we move forward. I totally agree. Let's go to this clip. Well, we got some... 12, big 12 smoking song. Be right here. Mm. Best way to feed them, uh, the smoke is safe, real nice. We just catch these, eh? these catch this man in the line, real fun. We smoke them. Wow, so <laughs> that is the nice part of it. Where you know you can you know you can catch a lo you can catch loads of different fishes, uh, and you could you know you know have the wildlife, um, you know wherever all these things are called uh, the yari or what you call the the food that 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 you guys would you know hunt and cook, um. And, and that's the beauty is that sort of amazonian touch outside of you know the market square and the modern stuff in terms of shoe stores and boutiques and all that thing that people rush after linden there is something about linden that's quite amazonian in terms of the waters in terms of um the wildlife in terms of the natural raw vegetation of like the forest areas the hilly sand and clay areas and so on um and you have brought out and those who will go to your um youtube channel will have a first and uh, look at the beauty the rawness and beauty of that sort or aspect of linden that i think young people and others may turn a blind eye to because they want the modern stuff you know they want to jump into a new taxi they want to you know you know go to georgetown and do whatever but is that real aspect of linden that you are bringing out that would be remembered yes because there is a lot of people living in linden that doesn't know the way through the river itself they might know okay if you go across the, the bridge you're gonna head up to Wotuka and you're gonna pass Wotuka and you're gonna head to Old England and then you're gonna head to Kamaka Mines and Three Friends Mines. And, but if you're gonna ask them how you get through the river to it, they, they have no idea. So I wanna like make some videos going through the river, showcasing those areas, going all the way to Botaba, Malali, mm -hmm. past Malali and go to Great Falls, those places that people some people here doesn't even know exist yeah. so you know if i could light those things in my videos people could look at it and say yeah that's nice that's just beautiful places we would love to do that sometime but you, you know, have actually you have actually started that you have actually started yeah. that because um you've captured a lot about the Demara River, and you would have gone into the Essequibo River. As I said, my videos, I don't know why I'm not getting them up the way I ought to get them. But let's go to this clip quickly for us to talk about it. All right. So we camped at Parawico Creek. This is the main river. This is the creek. Look at the difference of the water. The creek water. Rick water mixing with the river water there. 
Yep. This this used to be one piece of land gone out there, but over my little time the erosion took place and formed a little channel through here. But that way is going back to Rockstone down river. And this way is up. If you go up here you're gonna reach Botukari or Sara Mountain and you could go all the way up, all the way up past Tandy Lake and Wonderful. Brian, that is what the things you and Jackie, that those are the things that you're capturing that, that people will be inspired by. I have never seen, and I am from Linden, I have never seen a river, uh, you know, join with a creek. I don't, what do you call it, a tributary or something? Where you have, you see the difference, you see where the river stops and the creek starts and the difference in the water. We just saw that there. How, how do you explain that? For the world to hear yeah that you know especially in the east river they have so many creeks that empties into the main river mm. and the, those waters don't mix they they come right together like this and you see a line drawn between them there it's it's like nature at its best and so amazing you know you, you would look at it and say wow that's something to see because the creek water is so pure too, so yes, fresh. Yep. And it doesn't mix with the yeah. river water. But it's fantastic so. because it's water and you know water will just mix. Like if you, you, you know what I mean, if you chose some Kool-Aid drink in a cup of water, it's literally just going to mix. You chose some bitters. And, you know, but it's so beauty, and you 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 talked about nature. I want to know because um, Guyana is on the rise. Um, it's a great thing yourself and Jackie. You know, it's a great thing you guys are doing. Um, and you can actually expand on that and build it into a tourism industry in which um yeah. you can offer. You know, you you can become guides, and you know. And, and and bring that history out with through brochures and booklets and and so on about the beauty and about your knowledge of of Wisma and Linden and the the riverine areas um the Demerara River and its beauty going all the way up to Roxton going into the Sequiba River I think um you know and even going into Aichunin Kukwani into the Burbis River you have a running knowledge of the waters and, uh, and about aquatic life and all that kinds of stuff. We are seeing today that um, that loads of foreigners are coming into Guyana because of the oil wealth, um, and people will come with similar expertise as yours. And they may be given the opportunity because they are foreigners to build on that and to say, you know, we can make this into a tourism site and, and so on. Have you thought about uh, developing on that so that you can build that sort of industry yourself and Jackie um, to, to, um, to offer foreigners and those who are coming as a Lindena, overseas, ba overseas based Lindena, an original Lindena, to capitalize on that aspect of it, to offer that sort of um, service and so on to those who would come to visit instead of having others coming in to study what we have and to, you know, to showcase it and to get the proceeds from that. Yes, I have harbored thoughts of doing something just like that, you know. Right now I have a video because I came out of the jungle on Friday. Mm. I went in jungle on Wednesday, came back on Friday. So I have a video that I have to edit and drop on my Facebook channel. So I want to, you know, people would love this kind of experience. And I I would go as far to say, if you think you would like to have an adventure like this, you could drop some comments, you could reach out to me, and we could go forward from there and see how this could develop. I have har harbored that thought. And that is something I could do. So One, going forward, that would wonderful, be wonderful. But you need to think in the context of expanding it to the point where 
whomever. You have to market it to that extent for it to become an industry, a thriving industry, that wherever people travel from across the world, when they're going into Georgetown, when they're going into the other places in, you know, in the Essequibo and all those places that the rich have got resorts, you have got to focus on the fact that this entire Region 10 area, this entire Linden area and the Reverend areas on the outskirts, that you can have that monopoly on that to showcase that and to, to invest in it in a way where it becomes a proper international tourist site for people. And I think that it would bring in the proceeds. I'm throwing that out because you're Linden or you're my people. Um, of course, it would create employment for a lot of people because you're overseas. You can train people. You can impart that knowledge. You know what I mean? You can do whatever. Brian, um, uh, Jackie, I want you to, 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 because Brian has been speaking a lot. I don't want to, to look as if we're not allowing the woman to speak because there is equality <laughs> in my struggle. Um, um, and so before we go to the next um discourse the next um thing we'll talk about before we wrap up uh, what do you have to say about all of this jack in terms of tourism in terms of how would you support that or you how would you support brian what would be your vision you know um sometimes we don't think that we are the change we are the people that could make and capitalize on this thing here you understand uh, and others come in and they take it over and then we look at, uh, you know, and so on. And so how do you feel about it? Yes. So we have been thinking about this because I know Brian's love for hunting, fishing. He's very experienced in this, versed in this. He knows the riverine areas, the Rockstone, Kokwani, all these areas. So we have been thinking about it. And I think it's a very good venture. We would love to do it. I would totally support it. So it's something we really want to look into in the future and, and see I, how we can win this. I, I, and I believe you should because of your love and because of, you know, your selfless um, work in terms of even doing this now for nothing. Um, I believe that it's something that should be explored and it's something that you should um, think about carefully and approach uh, the relevant authorities for the funding, for the support, for whatever, to make it into Guyana is going to Guyana is already uh, a, a country that has to be reckoned with in terms of wealth. Uh, it has been recent, but it will continue to expand. I would rather think that there are people who would study what is there to exploit, who are from who are not from Guyana, and they will take advantage of it. And we would have to be spending to see our own beauty, to see our own stuff. And so my work in activism and so on is to ensure that the local people can have that vision to know that they can be the ones who can thrive in, in such industry and to become wealthy and to give a service to people and so on. And so I'm glad that we're talking about this. You guys have done a great job. And I, of course... Um, it, it, the, what is the YouTube channel called? Adventures of JNB. Adventures of JNB. Guys, you go to YouTube, you can see the videos, you can see um, Brian and Jackie and what they're doing. Um, so go to Adventures of JNB and you can follow that page. Go to Adventures of JNB, you can follow that page, you can give support, you can offer suggestions, you can share your ideas and so on and so that as Lindeners we can begin to build something for Lindeners uh, that others may not come in and capitalize on. I, I want us to, um, I'm really, really, uh, Brian, if you want to say anything quickly before we go to the next subject and Jackie, you want to say something briefly, that's fine before we go to the next subject and wrap up. Well, since we have started the channel, this is our first trip back home. So we didn't ha get to do much videos of here yet. So now is the time we're doing videos from Linden and Guyana. So yes. this is our first uh, take on, on doing the videos here. Yeah, we know lots of YouTubers come down and they try to showcase Georgetown yes. and all those places. But we 
bring it to our hometown. We want to showcase linden. See what linen has to offer and get the exposure out there. Linden to the world. Yes, show the beauty of linden. Linden to the world. And Jackie, I see you eating all the egg balls and the the, the, the chicken yes. food. And but, but I, I don't understand this. You from behind a lumina plant. How come you drinking coconut water with straw? Is a <laughs> let me <laughs> What's it's going on, Jax? Have you ever drunk <laughs> coconut water with straw when you were in Guyana? <laughs> we didn't even have straw. If I'm, I'm only teasing you, darling. I want to stay in my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> it's a refined thing and it's so beautiful. I'm only teasing you there. Um, Let us take a 10 seconds break before we go to our next subject and wrap up. Oh, there's a raft going down the river. Early morning, Saturday morning, they're taking the timber down, the wood. Brian and Jackie, we have to talk about, um, I, I mean, I'm introducing you guys to the world. And um, this program is seen by people all around the world. Uh, and um, Lindeners and people from other places are the walks of life and so on it's a serious program but this is a program where we are not dealing with politics we're not going to deal with politics or anything but this is a program that people watch and they will call you and they will say i would have seen you on this program and so on we have a lot of problems in Guyana in terms of um violence against women we have a lot of problems in terms of domestic violence domestic abuse and so on you Yourself and Jackie, to me, in my experience, you are a remarkable example of what longevity, love, friendship, you know, what it is about in a relationship. If I recall well, you would have known each other from school. I remember as a child, literally a child, in the Murray's house, and, ja and Jackie was there with Brian. Brian would be downstairs in the goldsmith shop working, Jackie upstairs. They were together. And before I would have, um, you know, would have known when that union would have been formed, before marriage, when that relationship would have been had, I would have thought it was from school days. And you are older than me. I finished school in 1989. That is a long, long time ago. And look at you sitting there as if you just met each other, as if the love is young and new. It, it touches my soul because not many of us have been able to, to achieve that feat. Not many of us would have been able to hold a union so long, to be friends, to be sitting next to each other, to be walking out in the street, videoing, having a YouTube channel. Children are grown, and that love seems as if you, Brian, would have chatted you up last month. You know, and I <laughs> want to say to the, and I mean it, I want to say to the world that, 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 it mesmerizes me. It touches my soul. And because this program is to inspire and to influence, I wanted to take this opportunity for you guys to talk to young people, Guyanese in general, not only people from Linden, Guyanese in general, about what makes a relationship work. What caused that fire that fanned the flames of longevity? that you can be together the way you are sitting here today. And that is very, very important. Talk to us. I want to start with Brian. And you can speak to the young people and the people across the world how it all started. You know, if you, you, you chatted or said, like, I got a fish on a string, I could show you what I'm doing or whatever. <laughs> how did you get her attention? You know, it's a moment that we are going to go light. But I'm giving you an opportunity before the world to be an example, 
to shine a light because that is what the program is about. It's about influencing and inspiring. And you have this opportunity today to, to, to speak to young people. There is so much violence. There is so much murders, um, you know, in every ethnic group, domestic violence in Guyana. A young lawyer, female lawyer, was killed by her boyfriend and he killed himself. It was a murder-suicide. And, you know, and, and, you know, what, what, I want to start with Jackie first, um, uh, you know, how did it all start? How did it develop? How did it? Oh, <laughs> Talk to us. <laughs> School days, yes. Brian saw me before I saw him, right? <laughs> yes. Got you got good eyes. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, don't be, don't be shy. You need to speak I, now. You need to be ex yeah. explanatory. He saw me, right? And he did try to talk to me. But as a young female, I had, had self-respect. Yes. And I, look, I'm, if you really like me, because we did talk, you have to speak to my parents first because I'm not going to meet you here or there or whatever have that respect for my family and myself so oh, as young women mm -hmm. go ahead, we go need ahead. to have respect but from the point when he talked to you to the point when you would say you have to talk to my parents that tells me that there was an attraction on your part because if you didn't like him you know, you wouldn't say, well, you, you have to. So what was the magic? What what did he say? What what caused you to say, like, oh, I'm going to stop and listen to you. Um, You know, oh, I, I, I'm going to say, yeah, I, I think I like him. To, if you want, if you like me, you can't play around. You got to meet my parents. What was that point as a self-respecting woman that this individual, this single individual of all the handsome boys, the athletes at multi-school back in those days, you know, that, that today you have lived a life throughout the decades with a love that that cannot be, you know, measured. So what happened? You, we need to talk about this now because I'll ask Brian too. There's always an attraction. Yes, you see somebody and there has to be an attraction to them for it to go any place. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, yes, we did talk. And he, I guess, whatever he said to me, I like. I don't know why it was so long ago. <laughs> you don't remember. You don't remember. <laughs> Go ahead. Long ago. But, yes, we did talk. And, yeah, we had quite conversations. As you know, we would go to the movies together. Because mm. that was the thing back in. We would go to the cinema and see the movies and stuff. We both had a love of reading. As you know, you used to borrow books from his dad. Yes, yes. A love of reading. We both had a love of reading. So there was a, a, com a commonality there. Yes. You have to have something in common. So I guess and the, the way of life, because I grew up in the river, he grew up here, and... Brian and my older brother was friends and they were with fish and hunt mm -hmm. and play and stuff. So I guess, you know, that kind of form a bond. Bond, yes. Because we same things. But he was yeah. respectful. His approach was respectful. Because we're talking to the young people across Guyana now to give them an example of, you know, he was respectful. He was charming, yeah. you know, um, and so on. Brian, so, so... I gotta <laughs> ask you this question. I see you only arm tight. But well, how, how did it? <laughs> what, 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 was, what was the lyrics? Did you lie to her from the start? Or you just like give her the, the sweet talk? Or you know, um, not lie, but we sweet talk is, is pull people. So how, how did it start for you? How I did guess you know um, she was the one. I knew her from when she just started going to multi. I went to multi. And then I left multi. But after many years, after I saw her again and said, yeah, I, just, you, like, it's, I knew this is the one, you know, this mm. is the one here, man. And I pursued and 
persevered. Persevered, and <laughs> you know, and we eventually got engaged and yeah. got and married. So, so you have how many children you have together? Three, Three. kids. Two kids. Two grandkids. And two grandkids. So shout out to them. Respect, enough love. Um, look, the longevity of the relationship, and it's a serious question. You know that familiarity breeds contempt. You could be together for two, three years. You could even be together five years. You have kids, and then the novelty can wear off. You know, people can look at other people. You know, you know what the society is like. Um, Jackie is very attractive. You're very handsome. A girl might like you at that workplace. A man might like Jackie at the workplace. But you have weathered the storm. You have stay together for decades and it's not only staying together but seeing you now those who are watching us one can feel that affinity one can feel that comfort shared amongst you one can feel that love whatever that word is that that you are happy to be around each other after all those years how long have you been together 33 married, 35 together. 35 together, mm -hmm. 33 married. 30, 33 years married or 35 years? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how long have you been with each other? Together, yeah. Oh, 33 married, 35 together. That's a long, long time. That's a lifetime. That is a lifetime. And I'm happy that those who are listening and will watch this program after, as the days pass, that they can be inspired by it. Um, and, and so we are going to close. But Brian, you know, I have to, because I'm trying for all, you know, in relationships, people have fights. They have, you know, whatever, whatever. Um, what would you have to say to the young people out there that are in relationships that are, you know, somewhat violent, somewhat controlling, somewhat, I am the man, you got to do what I say, or I'm the woman, I could do whatever I want. Your magic, your magic has to have something to it that caused this friendship to be equal, to be parallel, to be, you know, you know, what do you have to say to young people? If you talk about the sojourn for 35 years, 35 years knowing each other, from the teething stage of um, dating, to getting serious, to making children, to seeing them grow up, uh, to having grandchildren, to being together now, next to each other, bracing shoulders. We'll go to bed and wake up in the morning and catch fish tomorrow and be happy. Eat egg ball and be happy. What do you have to say to the young people? Brian Forrest and then Jackie and we wrap up. Talk to the young people. Well, Humans would always have conflicts, always have misunderstanding. But you got to get mutual respect for each other. Yes. Respect, very, very important in a relationship. If you love each other and you have that respect, you know, that goes such a long way. And you have to, you have to um, give and take. Compromise is the, Compromise. is the main thing. You can't just want your way all the time. No, it's not going to work. Yeah. You got to compromise. And you have that respect and that compromise. Man, that's the magic. That is the magic now, man. I'm telling you. It is beautiful. Jackie? And you have to be willing to talk to each other. Talk to each other. And tell each other, look, some he may do something I don't like, but we're willing to talk about it. No one wants to hear their faults. I may do something that he doesn't like. But you have to talk to each other and try not to go to bed angry. That's the whole thing. Even though we're angry with each other, I always say speech is God's gift to mankind. Do not hold your speech away from each other. Talk, talk about to it. each other. Talk about and try it. to find something that you can bond over. Like I try to support him in stuff that he likes and he support me in stuff that I like. So it's not all about one person. 
It's a unity, a unified front. But your love is as strong as the, the first time you fell in love with him to this day. Yes. And yes. equally, Brian, your love is as strong. Yes, you definitely. have been together for 35 years. You are together now. You are working together. You are socializing together. And today at Linden, as you travel from the U.S. to return to your community, together you have a YouTube channel that is not called Linden YouTube. It's called Brian and Jackie. Equal. Brian and Jackie. And you are taking this to the end i love to the end like chucky and i'm gonna say this to you tonight and i mean it and i want to say to the young people across the world aspire to be like brian and jackie because six months in a relationship with violence and cheating on war and this and that and so on is not even mentionable much less to talk about a part of a lifetime the beauty of That's love is its longevity the beauty of love is going through the rough and the tumble but still coming out clean at the other end saying that we will walk an extra mile you have been an example to tonight here on this program to young people that can be inspired and we call on young people to stop the violence against each other because if you can do it they can do it too and they can withstand the test of time stay together bring about generations and still have a youtube channel where we can see fishes egg balls coconut water <laughs> and all of that i want to thank you very much for being here on voice of the diaspora and i will give you 20 seconds each to say in parting what you want to say to the viewers. Okay, well, first of all, thank you so much for having us. Yes. And as I said before, this is just our starting of what we want to bring to the rest of the world concerning this region, Linden Region 10, because it's not just here, it's Escribo, Demerara, Barbies. That is where and we want to make this place something that people want to come and visit, want to return and on holiday to come back and say, yes, we want to spend some time back home. Bring your friends, bring some people that says, wow, that place looks amazing. I want to go there. So this is something we want to do. And I thank you so much, Norma, for giving, me, giving us this opportunity to showcase that. We want You're to welcome. thank everyone for tuning in. Thank the viewers. Thank you, Norman. And we want to keep this going. Yes, we want to expand and grow this YouTube channel. So thank you guys so much for your support. Brian and, and Jacqueline Alicock Murray here on Voice of the Diaspora. It has been a pleasant program. I hope that the viewers will take away from this um, the important aspects of it in every form. And I trust that I can have Brian and Jacqueline back on this program in future when they would have developed on what they're doing or the expertise. And I would be happy to have them back as millionaires um, showcasing Linden and so on. You know, and I mean that I want to say, Brian and Jackie, thank you very much for being here on Voice of the Diaspora. Do have a pleasant evening. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, there's a raft going down. Well, we got. All right. I think I'm getting some e-cops. Good night, guys. I can't find the track to play. I think it's disappeared. But um, have a blessed evening. And until next time, this is Voice of the Diaspora. Brian and Jacqueline Murray here on Voice of the Diaspora.